Scattered throughout the various levels of Astro's Playroom, the pack and title for the PlayStation 5, players come across various references and vignettes of Sony's illustrious gaming history. Along with special artifacts that offer rotatable 3D models of Sony's hardware throughout the years, players can find adorable little bots dressed up as different characters from their gaming history or performing actions that you would perform in said game. I want to take a moment to show you all of them. But since this is YouTube, I also want to rank them based on my own bias criteria until I eventually showcase my favorite ones. I'll keep my comments short to help keep this video trimmed down a bit, but I'll at least let you all know what each vignette is showcasing down here in the corner. So if you don't immediately catch the reference, as was the case with some of them for me, just take a look at the bottom corner over here where I will show you exactly what the reference is. Each bot will be given a tier ranking based on how creative a vignette it is and how much joy it brought me to find them and eventually realize what they were. If a particular one doesn't receive a higher tier ranking, it's not necessarily because it's bad, but because I either didn't immediately catch the reference myself or because I thought it could have been better portrayed. I'll say up front that of the 60 plus bots, only about 10 are in my lowest tier and that's the C tier I might add. And it's mostly because it's just ones that I'm personally unfamiliar with or just had me like, oh, hey, you're here. Here's how things will break down. C tier were the ones that were hard to pinpoint exactly or just kind of meh overall for me. B tier is an average reference, usually simple, just having the character or object stand there and not much else. A tier is a pretty good reference. It's usually recognizable, sometimes interactable, and all around just a fun discovery to make and S tier are the fantastic ones. They're instantly recognizable, usually offer a fun little gag or something else to make it more fun, and are some of the best references throughout the entire game. I tried my best to keep these rankings from being related to my personal feelings on the game that the reference is making, and I instead based it solely on how good a reference it is or how fun it was to interact with and or find it. I'll be ranking them in ascending order of ranks, so C tier followed by B tier and so on and so forth, and within each tier, they'll be sorted alphabetically to make things a little bit easier on me. Like I said, we got 60 of these bad boys to judge, so let's just start with the bottom rung. Just a flying jet going around in a circle. It was honestly a little hard to fully discern what this was supposed to be, given how many flight sim games there are out there. But the connection to Ace Combat, or I guess in this case, Air Combat due to the jet's coloring, helped to identify it. I mean, it's pretty obvious that it wasn't Microsoft Flight Simulator, but if it was, that would be a very interesting reference to put into a Sony game. I never really liked the Fat Princess games conceptually, and this reference is pretty much why. It's just a fat bot that when you hit it, it gets a little fatter for a moment when the cake that's on its belly goes into its face screen thing. Overall, this is just a lazy reference. This was one of the only ones that I was completely unfamiliar with upon discovery, and that pretty much led me to being genuinely and utterly confused upon discovering it. I mean, it looks nice, and I might check out the game now as a result of seeing it, but I still don't know it, so it's a C tier. Personally, I liked the Knack games, the first one being a rather good showcase of what the PlayStation 4's capabilities were early on, and the second just kind of being there. This reference never has Knack actually form into his humanoid form in any way, so it's just a bunch of blocks that are just sitting there. The fact that this is in the game is awesome, as Legacy of Kain was one of my favorite games for the original PlayStation, but it loses a lot of points for placement and lack of anything distinct outside of the costume. If it were in a more viewable area, with something to help distinguish it from anything else around it outside of the clothes, it might have been better received, but I think this one's just another lazy one. Just a bunch of little bots around a TV holding plastic steering wheels. Nothing special here. Honestly, the same goes for the ones playing Bot of War in another part of the game. Not a lot of thought was put into this outside of changing one of the words in the name to Bot. The cave drawing bit with this is kind of fun, but I thought it was supposed to be a reference to Monster Escape from The Playroom VR on PS4. I think it might actually work as a bit of a dual reference, and if that's the case, it'd be bumped up to probably a B tier. But I don't know enough about Potapon to really know for sure, so it's just kind of... eh. 
This one took me quite a while to remember what it even was, mainly because I never played it. The only connection that I can make was that it was a horror game, and if it had utilized something from the game other than just the flashlight, I don't know, it might have ranked a little higher. As I said, I'm not really familiar with the game, so I don't know if it's like a classic or anything, but me personally, I would have preferred a Fatal Frame reference here instead. Just a bot wearing an envelope on its head. The leaf in the upper right corner helps link it to Tearaway, but otherwise this could just as easily be a reference to the post office as it is to Tearaway. Maybe if the little bot was playing on a Vita at the same time, it might be more recognizable, but otherwise it's just kind of... eh. That bird looks nothing like Trico, and I'm still not 100% convinced that this is supposed to be a Last Guardian reference. It's confusing due to the lack of an actual Trico-like thing, and therefore, in my opinion, a bad reference. Instantly recognizable as Ape Escape, but it's just kind of basic otherwise. If the one holding the net looked a little bit more like Spike and the one in the bush looked a little bit more like an escaped ape, then this would likely have gotten a higher ranking. Hell, the description on the PlayStation 1 DualShock artifact is better than this in my opinion. A cute little nod to an otherwise forgettable game. I genuinely forgot about the Spirit Brother thing until it was pointed out to me, but at least it does a better job using those blocks than the Knack reference did. A cute little hunter slashing at some grass. And that's it. No abhorrent beast or nightmare executioner or even so much as a cleric beast in sight. If it was more than just him standing there swinging at nothing, this would have been higher up or at the very least put him in a darker area. It's too bright here. Yep, that's a Norman Reedus bot stuck in some mud with a bunch of boxes on his back all right. The little bot in the BB tube, the Odra deck poking out, and the various crabs scuttling about near this bot are nice little touches. But otherwise, I felt it was lacking something, like maybe a BT in the background. You'll notice that many of these BT entries, in my opinion, are just lacking a little extra something to make them great. And that theme pretty much continues into the next several references. I'm personally not as familiar with most of From Software's offerings outside of Bloodborne, so I thought for the longest time that this was just a reference to Dark Souls. I didn't make the Demon Souls connection until I asked a buddy of mine. And I feel that having the kneeling bot and armor akin to that on the Demon Souls cover would have helped distinguish this for a casual like me. Otherwise, it just is another From Software game that wasn't Bloodborne. A very fun reference to two great PlayStation things. It's only brought down by the fact that the T-Rex is made out of what looks like voxels, making me think this is a reference to 3D Dot Game Heroes for the PlayStation 3. If it was clearer that it was meant to be a Dreams reference, it would have probably gotten a higher ranking, but the simple fact that this reference to the PlayStation 1 tech demo kept it from being an even lower tier. I would have probably ranked this one higher if the bot ever actually took a swing with that golf club. Also, he's holding an actual golf club instead of a move controller, so that knocked a few points off for me. Just felt like this could have used a lot more to help it out. Not entirely sure what for this one, but I don't know, something. The Buster Sword is one of the most iconic weapons in video games, but this homage is both a little too much and not enough at the same time. It's too much because there's just too many bots surrounding it admiring it and loving the thing with a halo of light shining down upon the dang thing. But it's not enough because they're just bots. Not bots dressed as Cloud, Barret, Tifa, Aerith, or anyone from the series. Just bots. It's really just one big missed opportunity in my book. A bot with an origami crane on its stomach in a rainy level is all this one gets. Granted, the origami crane is one of the main symbols of the game. It's the only thing on the game's cover, after all. And there is a trophy you get for getting out of the rain near this one. But ultimately, this would have been more fun if it included the four playable characters in costume or something alongside it. Again, just another missed opportunity. This one's cute but it honestly loses points because while Aiko is dressed up in his iconic little helmet and has a sword, that's it. Yorda is portrayed by just another bot without any clothing, and the only other connection between them is that they're holding hands, like, in the game. If she had a dress, I probably would have ranked this as an A tier for sure. 
Good staging and overall execution on this one, but it doesn't really sell Infamous for me. The Colt McGrath bot just has a sling bag and electric hands to indicate who he is, but the electricity is yellow instead of either blue or red like it would be in the game depending on the bot's morality scale. I need to know if this bot is good or bad, Asobi. Please fix this. This is really just a minimalist design of Jack, with only the headband, goggles, and ears to really sell who it is, along with a facsimile of one of their victory poses from the first game. What ruins this one for me is that instead of a bot dressed as Daxter, there, it's, just, it's just a little rabbit. And while there's a creative solution for this, it feels wrong. The flowing parka on the bot being blown in the wind on top of a snowy mountain peak is nice, but it's lower ranked for two reasons. For one, most of Journey takes place in the desert, and for two, there's no ridiculously long flowing scarf to accent the cloak. Granted, there's no desert level in this game to begin with, so that part can be excused, but I wish it had a scarf along with the cloak to help show me just how far this little bot has truly traveled. The added touch of the aim controllers with this is very cute, but overall this is just kind of boring. They're in formation, holding their weapons, and wearing helmets. But that's it. It's just boring. Plus, I was always more of a fan of Insomniac's Resistance series personally, and the lack of a Resistance easter egg, as far as I'm able to tell, saddens me. One of the best PlayStation 4 titles gets one of the most okay references in the game that some players might not even see. It's in the background of an already busy area that itself references Astrobot Rescue Mission, and aside from him hanging upside down in a pose that's reminiscent to Spider-Man, this could just as easily be a bot hanging there after being captured by one of the little spiders. If it were in a Spidey costume or something, it probably would have worked better. The thought that any of these little bots have a skeleton inside of them is terrifying. But other than that, this is just a basic little reference tucked into a corner of a level. I'm not sure why he's stuck in the mud, at least that made sense for the Death Stranding reference, but it's still kind of fun to see, and when you punch him, his head pops off, so a little added body horror. In the level where you become a ball, there's a baseball reference. There's really not much else to say about it, since it's just one bot pitching to another bot that can't hit the ball to save his life, so... Let's just move on. A group of hunters sitting around the fire playing what look like PSPs. The only reason this is so distinguishably Monster Hunter is because of the comically sized weapons adorning their backs and the meat roasting on a spit in the center of them. And honestly, all that's fine. Personally, it would have been nice to see one of the Palicos preparing the food for them instead, but that's more because I think the Palicos are really the best part of Monster Hunter, so sue me. A quick one that you could very easily miss, this one is supposed to represent the five games included in PSVR Worlds, a pack and title for the PlayStation VR that functions as a demo for the VR tech. I wish there were more of these scattered around the world so that the other four games could be referenced, but this is the only one we get, so I don't know, I'll take it. Imagine if this one had Ratchet holding the Rhino, or turning a bolt crank, or something other than just having him hold a bunch of bolts. I mean, the connection to the currency from the games with the bolts is nice, but he doesn't even hold them in the games since they just fly into an invisible pocket or wallet or whatever. I just wish this one had a little more to it is all, and that's honestly the whole reason it's just B tier. I lumped these two together mainly because you find them in the game close together already, and ultimately due to the same thing of showing the ship or ships from their respective game just flying. The Resogun reference gets slightly higher points from me for flying similar to how the ship flies in the game, and it's the game I prefer of the two, but other than that, they're both just... flying ships. Woo. I genuinely thought this was supposed to be a Gran Turismo reference, and I am saddened by the fact that there is not a Gran Turismo reference in the game, despite personally not really liking or playing Gran Turismo. This just has the misfortune of being caught up in the needless crossfire of my distaste. This one had such potential to be an A tier on this list, but I wasn't allowed to see it. From a distance, we see him messing with a safe, but get too close and he ducks inside until you get a considerable distance away. I want to love this reference so much, but the game doesn't even really want me to see it, so it's a B tier. Despite the group of eight just standing around doing nothing, this would have probably been ranked higher if each of the bots actually had something to distinguish them. 
as it stands, only like four of them have anything to help identify who they're supposed to be. And even just having the killer off to the side would have helped improve this. But as it is, it just feels incomplete. This one took a bit to remember, but unlike Siren, I actually did play Vib Ribbon at some point. That said, I wish the bot had a pair of rabbit ears or something to match the player character Vibri from Vib Ribbon, but otherwise this one's just cute. I like it. What have I got? This one's honestly just kind of basic. Alucard pops up out of a grave and brushes his hair, but it gets some bonus points for being one of the only references that requires the player to interact with it first. It's a fun little discovery and an even more fun reference, in a room that would have worked better for the Bloodborne reference. I personally loved my time with Concrete Genie, and this was a fun little reference to come across. Overall, it's pretty simple, but it has more movement and life to it than some of the other references do, so it gets some extra bonus points in my book for that. I'm not entirely sure if this is truly a reference to the game in question, but I put it in because I thought it was cute and I used to play DDR2 on my PS2 with my sisters, so it made the list. It's fun to just watch this little guy dance to the rhythm in his head, but if there was like a little TV in front of him that showed arrows climbing up the screen, it would have absolutely made this one that much better. Easily one of the best stage references in the game. The motorcycle is instantly recognizable feature of Days Gone, and having a horde of infected chasing it adds to the fun. Honestly, this would have been a S tier reference if it was just a little closer or even more easily viewable. Its current position is just far enough away for it to not be fully appreciated. Seeing display models for the androids was fun, but this went above and beyond by having them freak out a little bit when you hit them, and having a couple of them being different from the others. My personal favorite is this suave little guy here, though this guy over here more represents my feeling towards this year and honestly Detroit become human itself. Much like the Bloodborne Hunter, this one just kinda sits there swinging his sword at nothing but grass, but the cherry blossom tree nearby adds a little bit of added flair, and when you hit him his sword almost castrates him, which is a little bit of added humor. The first reference most players are likely to see, these two bots are easily recognizable, and the boat they're riding in fits right in with the game's overall aesthetic. It's a nice little nod to one of the PS4's best games, but just shy of being S tier for having them just sitting there posing. Dressed in a full outfit, shooting the bow and being able to actually be hit by the arrow she shoots all make for great Horizon Zero Dawn references but this one falls just shy of being an S tier entry for not having the bot shooting at something from the game and instead just shooting at a bunny. Even a bot holding a target or with an apple on its head William Tell style would have pushed this one over the edge for me. A bot with a zipper on the front of it sitting, waving, and dancing on a handcrafted globe with level select options is adorable. This would have been a bit better if it also used the poppet or at least one of the gadgets from a Little Big Planet game. But it was just a fun little surprise to see this one, especially given the fact that this is technically the second Little Big Planet reference in the game, alongside this vignette that you can get through the gacha game that has a bot operating on Sackboy. The second one is a little bit darker, but in tandem with one another, I'd say that counts as an A tier. One of the more easily visible references is also one of the most obscure to most people, but this one gets some points for being interactable in a fun way. When you punch this bulbous boy, it breaks apart into a bunch of smaller boys. And that's genuinely cute. And even if I'm not familiar with the game, I knew right away what this was. The simple fact that the bots representing Parappa and Lammy are cardboard cutouts is incredible. But when that's all that really distinguishes them as the characters in question, it was a little underwhelming. Still a fun little reference to come across, though. This one references the often overlooked PlayStation 3 game Puppeteer and it's mostly done through the gigantic pair of scissors that the bot is using. If the bot had been dressed up like Kudaro, or was wearing one of the heads that you can get throughout the game, it would have been an S tier for sure, but otherwise it's a fun call out to an otherwise underrated game. I'm always happy to see more of Pyramid Head, even if he's dragging a helpless little bot around by their ankle. If the area around him was a little foggy, or if the bot he was dragging was dressed like James Sunderland, it would have been a much better display in my book. At least they didn't nerf his ass like they did in Dead by Daylight. 
This was originally going to be a B tier entry, but then I discovered at some point after first seeing this one that hitting the bots can sometimes trigger unique little animations, and so I figured I'd try it out with this one too. Spyro is easily one of my favorite game characters, and watching him torch the bot made me laugh for a lot longer than I'm willing to admit. Would've been nice to see him in another fashion though, but I'll take what I can get. This one is improved by interacting with it, where Kazuya and Hihachi do a quick little back and forth before returning to Kazuya, standing triumphant over Hihachi. I personally recall playing this series as an arcade game in bowling alleys, and absolutely owning up as king. But he's not referenced here, so I'll just say that this is a fun little sight and leave it at that. I really enjoyed my time with the Order 1886, and while that time was short, the game has stuck with me since I played it. Seeing a Sir Galahad bot bouncing back and forth between two half-breed bots hanging in bushes is kind of cute, and it makes me wish that we could someday somehow get a sequel to that game. Wearing the classic green tank top and booty shorts as they jump and pose, this bot is a fun callback to the original Tomb Raider series, right down to the polygonal chest that made the character famous. The problem is where it's placed. Much like the Legacy of Kane or Days Gone references from before, this one's in a fairly awkward spot due to it being high up and next to a ramp that forces you down if you walk too high up on it, making it hard to fully appreciate this one. Sony's cute little kitty mascots have made their appearances in games before, including Doko Demo Isio, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Here, Toro and his Blackford counterpart Kuro are shown dancing in front of a PlayStation Pocket, in front of a bunch of CRT TV monitors with the PlayStation 1 logo on them, and I love it. It's just shy of being an S-tier because it reminded me of Carmel dancing with how they're dancing, and now that that song is stuck in my head, I decided to take points off. This one has got it all. A bot with an obvious crash head doing crash crotch slam victory dance. An Aku Aku mask just floating nearby and hanging out. Breakable crates full of wumper fruit. And best of all, when you hit the bot, it does the crash spin attack. It's just a perfect reference to one of Sony's original mascots. The only way I think it could possibly be better was if it was also yelling in a megaphone at a miniature Nintendo headquarters. The simple fact that this isn't Emo Dante from the PS3 game is already a point in this game's favor over PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, but the fact that he's also gun juggling a bot that I'm pretty sure is meant to represent Arkham, and that if you hit him, Arkham drops and Dante uses the sword to knock him back into the air like you would in the game, it all adds up to just one excellent reference. I will admit, this is one is a bit of a personal bias for why it's ranked so high. But Flower is easily one of my all-time favorite games. The reference in the game is pretty minimal, a bot standing there just guiding a trail of pedals around them, but it elicited such a warm feeling within me to see it that I literally stopped and just watched it. Much like how I can lose myself to just sitting there watching Flower the game when I would play that. Gravity Rush is one of those series that I wish I knew more about or even had the time to play, but I just haven't really gotten around to it just yet. Still, everything about this reference is instantly recognizable to me, from the flowing blonde hair of the bot representing Cat and how the gravity flying works. The only thing I'm not sure about is the apples, but it's fun to punch the crate and just send the apples flying everywhere, so I just let it slide. This was the first reference in the game that made me appreciate every detail about it. The fact that it's here at all is wonderful, but hitting the box causes the alert sound effect from the games to sound, the snake bot to look around in panic before ducking back under, and the fact that the box says Solid State on it as a pun related to Solid Snake's name instantly rocketed this to the top of the list for me. It's just overall adorable, and I love it. Anytime a reference was instantly recognizable, it got points. Anytime interacting with it added to the overall splendor, it got points. This one hits both of those, and also manages to reference one of the first games I ever played on the PlayStation 3. Much like the puppeteer reference from before, the simple fact that this is here made me love it. But then you're also able to launch the bot like you would the character in the game into a bunch of crates? And all of that combined just instantly made this an S tier in my mind. There's so many moving parts to this one that it's hard to not appreciate it. Chrisbot peeking through the door only to be scared by the zombie on the other side. 
the Jill bot encouraging him and rushing to close the door if you hit Chris bot. The zombie just vibing and doing his own thing, and then the scientist behind him holding a vial of T-Virus. It's more detail than was honestly needed, but it really works in this one's favor. With Ico and what I assumed to be the last Guardian being represented, I figured we'd also see Shadow of the Colossus. But the tribute to the game in question is literally gigantic. And by that I mean they brought in the big boy from Astrobot Rescue Mission to help sell the scale of this one, when they could have just as easily used an enlarged regular bot for this. It's such a great sight to see and it's hard not to like this one honestly. And above all else, it's just really easy to recognize what this is meant to be. This one has everything it needs to be instantly recognizable. The Joel and Ellie bots are dressed like their characters, the clicker in the background has a nice little crown of mushrooms on his head, and the fact that Joel is holding a brick to indicate he's trying to distract that clicker helps sell the story behind this little vignette. If anything, I'm a little surprised that this wasn't a reference to Part 2 given how much more recent that game is, but I guess seeing a Joel bot with his head bashed in by a golf club would have been a bit much. This last one sells the concept of Uncharted perfectly. There's wall climbing, gun toting, and the fact that the airplane crashed into the side of the mountain is both a part of this display as well as a part of the actual platforming of the game easily helps to make this one recognizable and distinguish itself from the rest of the references throughout the game. And there we have it. 60 different references from Sony's long gaming history crammed into this cute little pack-in title. But these references alone don't paint the whole picture of what's available in this game. And as I've mentioned in this video here, this game is just in general a fantastic celebration of the company's history with gaming. These are certainly some of the more obvious references to that, but in general I think this whole experience is worth playing. If I had to choose one reference as my absolute favorite out of the bunch, I'm honestly not sure that I could. That's part of why I did this as a tier ranking list rather than a typical numbered ranking. Even the ones I wasn't familiar with or were just kind of bad had me stop and look at them, and that's ultimately what they were there for. They're a fun little addition to an already fun game. And it was just great to see how some of these turned out. If you have a PlayStation 5 or at least plan on getting one, I highly recommend playing Astro's Playroom. What are your favorite references from the game? What games do you personally wish could have had a little bot recreation within Astro's Playroom? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.